Welcome to the uh, Monday, September 18, 2017, Board of Selectmen meeting, and we'll begin with a pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Supply of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Yes, I do, Bill. Thank you. The Bryant Film United Methodist Church is having a roast pork supper on Saturday, September 23rd at 5 p.m. The cost is eight dollars for adults and five dollars for children. Please call the church office at 781-293. 2025 to purchase tickets. And additionally, a second announcement, the Bryanville United Methodist Church is having a concert by Elizabeth Von Trapp, Trapp on the Sound of Music fame on Saturday, September 23rd, the same evening, but this will be at 7 p.m. Free tickets may be reserved by calling the church office at 781-293-2025 and are offered on a first come, first serve basis. There is no charge for the 7 p.m. concert, but you must be on the list of attendees. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> Announcement regarding the PAX TV, live TV telephone, telephone for Hurricane Relief. There is a Get Vote telephone, Hurricane Relief 2017. This will take place Saturday, September 23rd, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. You can donate and watch on www.pactv.org. The Get Vote telephone partners include PAC TV, the Rotary Club of Plymouth, Plymouth the Chamber of Commerce, Plymouth the Harmonic, Destination Plymouth, Plymouth Public Schools, Kingston Business Association, we current today, Kingston Collection, Make Peace Day, Cape Cod Media Center, Provincetown Community Television, Marshfield Community Television, many more. <coughs> the telephone will be seen by TV viewers from Marshfield's province. 100% of the donations will go directly to people on the ground in Texas and Florida, the uh, please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel number 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. And the next thing on the agenda, we have some very special guests. Um, thank you. This uh, my name is Christine Nogueira from Pembroke Public Schools. I'm a teacher, Spanish teacher. This is Ana Mendez one of our colleagues in Spain from our sister city, Alcorcón, and sister school, Galileo Galilei, and Maite Pinedo, who is also another teacher who has come with the program. This is our third year going, and last year, we were able to extend to them the offer of sister city, sister school, with your backing, and so we wanted to come this evening and introduce them and say thank you. We're very excited about this relationship. Yeah, um, it's an honor, a great honor for us and uh, I speak on behalf of all the community in Park in Madrid, Africa, where our school is. Um, it is a really important experience for my involved, I mean, families, kids, the whole community. And we'd like to uh, be grateful and to, give, uh, to say thank you for all your support and for the involvement of the whole community. But I think the, the, the those who got a saying are the kids who are really 
uh, protagonists here, those who really enjoy the experience, I leave it. Um, uh, they've got a short few words to <coughs> let you know how grateful we are for everybody's support in uh, your work. So if you don't mind, because uh, we are going to talk to you, okay? Okay, so we've got uh, Lucas first. Dear Paul, of Selectman and the Town of Bergen. First of all, we would like to show our deepest gratitude for hosting us, the students of Galileo Galilei High School, for making this unforgettable experience possible, and for the whole Pembroke community involvement. Not only the Pembroke High School itself, but also the middle and elementary school, Pembroke's house campus, and of course, all the families involved. One more year, we're having this great opportunity to experience how an exchange program can develop our social, cultural, and linguistic ability our, uh, by being part of our partner's daily life. And there's no doubt these experiences will definitely broaden our minds. <laughs> We hope this bond we make today will endure in the future and more American and Spanish students will be able to enjoy this beautiful experience. So, once again, thank you for your kindness and your welcome experience. Thank you. And now I've got a few words from our own Tom Horn, okay, back in uh, Alcohol. Uh, we've got a statement of purpose. I need to read the Spanish, but uh, Christine's going to help me translate, okay? And then this is for you to pick, okay? As uh, uh, a sound symbol of our friendship and sister city commitment. So, the character in the appearance. Declaration of intention. Considerando que el Galileo Galilei de Alcorcón, Madrid, España, ha establecido lazos de amistad y cooperación con Pembroke High School, in Pembroke, Massachusetts. With that IES Galileo Galilei of Alcorcón, Madrid, Spain, has established a relationship, ties of friendship and cooperation with Pembroke High School in Pembroke, Massachusetts. Y considerando que los dos municipios tienen una profunda intención de compartir ambas culturas desde el acercamiento de la lengua española e inglesa. With that, the two municipalities have the profound intention of sharing both cultures from the from the uniting of the languages of Spanish and English. Considerando el enorme valor que, se, que supone la consolidación y el fortalecimiento de la relación existente entre nuestros centros educativos y toda la comunidad escolar. And with that the enormous value that this consolidation and the strength of the relationship that we have established with our centers, our educational centers, and all of the community. El Ayuntamiento de Alcorcón declara su más sincera intención de continuar avanzando estos lazos de hermandad. The Town Hall of Alcorcón declares their most sincere intention of continuing and is strengthening these ties of brotherhood a través de futuras colaboraciones, intercambios lingüísticos y culturales entre nuestras comunidades, through future collaborations, exchanges, linguistic and cultural, from our communities, both of our communities, con el firme apoyo de nuestras instituciones, with the great support of our institutions. Okay, so this is for you, and um, yeah. And I'm happy. Yes, please. And this is my thing. We also brought a few books. We've got a glass museum in Alcorcón, where we're from. So we bought this just for you to the town hall to have and keep as a sign of friendship. And um, these, which are, we made. Um, okay. This is uh, one of the buildings in Africa, like some old castles we have there with the uh, Alcorcón. Um, it means our, with our uh, wish to make our bonds tighter between our both communities, Pembroke and Alcorcón. Okay, I'm going to show them. This is what we, what the town hall in Alcorcón. 
made for you. Okay? Thank so, you very much. <laughs> As there is a piece of Pembroke in of our phone that we delivered to them last February, and they were very mm -hmm. grateful for that gesture from the Pembroke. So thank you for that, too. So. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very exciting. Uh, I can see the enthusiasm right. from the folks that are uh, directly a part of this program, and look at the contingent that, that followed along with you. So <laughs> it's. Uh, it seems like a vibrant exchange program, and uh, I hope it continues for years to come. I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I believe the high school has been back to me the proper response that they now love. I'm glad one of us could do something. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you Second. 
questions or comments? Five thousand dollars in health insurance. 
Um, I wish this day had been notified of the meeting. I wish we could charge her right. I have been notified of the meeting. I have to believe that you guys didn't do this with full understanding to what was going to happen to these people's pensions. And I, I, I just hope that we can have an active discussion to try to straighten this out. You can't burden somebody who's making $26,000 with $5,000 worth of health insurance. We started this back in 2005, everybody in town was paying 10%, and we decided to raise the retirement up to 15 or one of all the active employees. And everybody did that. Um, then in 2006, I came before the board because they wanted to raise them another 5%. That would have been a 100% increase in two years in their health insurance. So we brought an article to the board of selectors meeting, and it was approved. I asked you to bring Father Anna freeze the increases for the 17 people who were under this, under the Medicare age. Um, and full disclosure, my son in law is now in that, but he was not there. I never asked him for my son in law covered. I didn't do this with my son in law covered. I asked for 17 people to stay with the current participation rate. Or select them, voted to approve. The current HMO rates be retained at a 15% contribution to employees under 65 and retired with the understanding that future retirees will go out with the rate, participation rate they were paying at the time they retired until they reached 65. And it was unanimously voted in favor I, as a principal, broke in the office at the time, have nothing to do with said what is the the treasurer collector, the lady who came in with me with us, sent out a letter to each one of these employees, the grandfather in the mall, because she put in the word 25. In 2000, and so next year, I found out that they were again talking about increasing them. Um, I went back to Ed, Ed and I talked about it, we talked about it quickly at a board of selections meeting, and we, at that time, we had five or six different participation rates because people had retired, and Ed, said we could move everybody back to 15, but he wanted to see the letter, so I took the letter, signed the letter, showed the letter, and they got a letter yet. Um, each one, each one, since this was this act put in place, have gone to retirement upstairs, either talk to Ed or talk to somebody in Kathleen's office, and they're all told they're going to be 15 percent until they get 65. And then in May, this meeting comes up, and they all get $75 increases in their health insurance rates. Some of them $100 increases. I have to believe it was done without the full impact of knowing what was going on. In 2016, we sat down before when you wanted to go through the GIC plan, when we were talking about the GIC plan. And there's a representative from each group, there's their own representative. We all sat there. George was the same as representative. And at the time, we as a group, you guys were all in the group except for Zach. He and he was in Matthew's place. And we all brought up the subject of these early retirees. This judge stood up and said, well, you know, you guys are all here to protect your group. Who's going to be here to protect my group? And we as a group, talking to each one of our union members, we all took a little, little bigger hit than we should have to keep these people at 65. And you guys all gave us the ad boy. We like the cooperation. You know, do you worry about these people? Well, when someone takes a job, the first thing they want to know is, how much am I getting paid, and how much am I paying for health insurance? The last thing they want to know when I'm going out the door is how much is my retirement, and how much is my name I pay for health insurance. These people were all told 15%. I have repeatedly said, if you want to change it, change it now so that the people who are retiring know they can either leave and go get another job, um, but to do this is like, it's just, just not fair. It's just not fair to do it to them. And I, I'm hoping that we take a, a vote and walk it back. Um, it's, a, it's a diminishing list. Um, I believe, I don't even know how many people are on the list right now. Because I haven't worked in that department since 2009. But right now, they're, they're looking at 20% of their pensions towards health insurance. And 
They, they will go, most of them, there's very few of them that will never be eligible for. And as soon as most of these people, this is a decreasing list, it started out being they won't be eligible for, for Medicare at 65? I believe... You I, don't have that quarters, you have to have 40 quarters. And if you don't have it for your Social Security, you cannot go on Medicare. And there's very few of them. I think there's probably maybe five. I don't know who's on the list. I asked who's on the list. I don't know who's on the list anymore. But I know when I did it, um, I don't want to think his name, but I can tell you after, he will never get the Social Security. He'll be on the town's network food plan his whole entire life. But there's very few of those. The rest of them will all age out. But my suggestion, if you take my suggestion, is go back to the letter and then say, from now on, this is what you pay. And, and this is only for people that are between 52 or whatever? No, anybody, no. Anyone under the age of 65. Anyone under the age of 65. Most of the people that are going to retire, they're going to do it 52 to 55 to 65. Yeah. If they're, if they're, if they're yeah. So they leave early, they don't get full benefits. Anyway. <coughs> they don't get full retirement because they haven't been in the system that long. No, but they will get retirement. Most of these people, but, there's very few of them who will age up, but it has to stop. I mean, I, I don't know if it's been stopped yet. I know it wasn't stopped when um, John Barakawanek went to retire. He went to retire and found out two days before he retired that no, they're moving him to 17%. So he went in and he said, no, past practice has been 15% for 11 years. And they, moved, they said, okay, you can go out to 15. I mean, something has to be done about it, but to, to, to balance, try to balance. And I understand health insurance. When I started doing health insurance, it was $350,000 a month. It's probably $1.3 million. I know that. I understand the intent of health insurance. But it impacts their budgets the same way health insurance impacts the town's budget. Yeah, well, I, know that, I know that the town has been looking for the last five years or whatever to get everybody up to 25 percent. But those people We're still been, get raises, Bill. Those right. people still no, get raises. I understand raises. that. No, still get, these guys get nothing. So, nothing. So we know that. The town is not looking to get everybody uh, mm -hmm. up under 25. And, um, and I know that some of the negotiations that went back and forth between police, fire, DPW, and all that was the fact that any new hirees will come in at 25%. Mm -hmm. So you're probably right on that end of it. It's, it's now somebody new is going to be hired. This is what it's going to be. I do always think we also have to have what our retirees going to pay when they go up. Take the person who was going out at 10, some of these guys went out at 5. To take the person who went out at 10 and say, okay, nope, you see, even though you're still out on the same pay that you made out at 10, you're now going to pay 25. It just, like I said, one of them's going to lose a house. 
So, um, Ed, do you have any input into this? You can give us a Not now, but I just want the board to take this under advisement and get a little uh, <clears throat> Bill, I have Thank some you. figures. I represent 140 <coughs> towns retirees. Yep. And I have these figures from David Sullivan from the County Retirement Association. And to give you an idea, 44% uh, of our retirees, of 143, that's 63 people, live at or below a poverty level of $13,200. So if you're talking uh, and they're paying 25% of increasing, their commitment to 50. That's a sizable impact. Uh, myself, in 1971, when I was hired, remember Tina Freeman? Yep. Beautiful, right? She explained to us the benefits we got. We worked for the town for 30 years. You reach age 55. This is what we're going to do for you. Well, I did 42 years. This is what I believe I'm entitled to because that's what I was told. Yep. Now, I also realized that. Uh, we get raises, COLAs, cost of living adjustments, but it's not what our pension is. It's based on a flat rate of $13,000. So that means if I get a raise, I get $260 a year, of which $65 I pay in taxes to the federal government. It means I get $195 for that year, $16.25 a month. So when you take that into consideration and talk about a percentage, that's a hell of a hit. And if you're making $13,000, you're going to be looking at whether you can afford to purchase prescriptions or food. And that's what's going to come down to. Another problem these people have, it is very hard for them to supplement their income. We have a number of over 90 years old. Who's going to hire someone coming in for a job, towing a bottle of oxygen? Over 90. How many people you go in the store, you see a 90 years old waiting on you? They can't supplement their income. There is no other way. <coughs> so I ask that you consider those facts, those figures, when you make these judgments. Because this is really going to hurt. It's only 143 people. I ain't going to break the time. I have to say, do you have any questions? Well, George, beg, uh, thanks for bringing it up. And uh, yes, you're right. I wish we were part of the discussion when we first had it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, th I think it's important that we know uh, how it truly affects, how it affects people, the group that you represent. And we'll, we'll certainly have a, a discussion on it and, and bring you in to some more talks shortly. Sure. I think this time is going to yeah, and I don't think that was our intention. I but know, I didn't that, think it was, but it, obviously it happened. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. So we'll get notified if there's more discussion. Mm -hmm. Yes. A request for a number of fund donations of fireworks for supplemental donations of fireworks in 1923 to 2017. And we had a to go over this, and uh, there is money in the Discussion? Any other discussion? Yes, yeah, so, uh, Bill, from you and the other board members in the audience, uh, I do support this expenditure because I believe that it's, it's, it's community events and it's uh, much like the Christmas tree lighting, it brings brings folks together and, and uh, celebrates a number of the community. Uh, but there are some folks out there that that I, I also represent that don't believe that board selectmen should be spending money on, on on private entities. So I just wanted to bring bring up that note that uh, there there are some folks that want us, the board selectmen, to 
uh, take pause uh, whenever we're spending uh, town monies on, <coughs> on a private event such as this. Again, I represent them and I want their voice to be heard, uh, but I do uh, agree with uh, Board of Selectmen's actions in giving this event $5,000 uh, should the vote pass. Do you have a motion and a second? All those in favor? Aye. Is there anybody opposed? Hearing none, I'll grant that. Um, I'll consider the appointment appoint an alternate Kyle Denson, who's a regular member of the uh, Pembroke Heron Fisheries Commission. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, this guy has done a lot of real hard work and uh, was an opening for him a regular for Scott and uh, mm -hmm. like to see him like to see what's uh, the uh, increased up to the rate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Chairman, I would make a motion to appoint Kyle Stenstrom of 122 Indian Trails to the Pembroke Herring Fisheries Commission to a term to expire June 30th, 2020. Second. Any questions or comments or concerns? Hearing none, and all those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Five to the He was also uh, voted, actually voted in the House. Uh, yeah, last meeting that um, recommended this, the whole pool recommended that he be uh, upgraded to the uh, <coughs> uh, Consider the vote to appoint uh, Mount Scott of Seven Allen Street to the Pembroke Council, Cultural Council. Move the appointment of Mount Scott. Second. Any questions or comments? No. All in favor? Aye. Consider the crest of the road closed at the end of Deerfield Lane, Multisac, um, only 9 to 17 from 12 to 6. Mr. Chairman, I would move granting the road closure request. Subject to approval of the uh, police and fire chief. Second. <clears throat> Any questions or comments? None. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Anybody opposed? This will be 5 to 0. Good. Uh, uh, vote to accept the minutes of August 21st, 2017. Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board accept the minutes of the selectmen's meeting of August 21st, 2017, as written. Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, this is a favor. Aye. Record of approved bills and payrolls of August 28th. September 6th and September 12th. Is the gap August 28th. And this is a uh, record of actions uh, by the board, with me, which is myself, on August 28th, 2017. I personally reviewed seven accounts, payable in arms, totaling $615,000. $26.89 and one payroll warrant totaling $223,549.83 prepared by the town account and authorized the itemized expenditure for payment. Also, um, motion to approve. Second. Any questions or comments? None. No. Aye. Aye. We also have a record of the actions of the board, uh, which was myself on September 6th, 2017. I personally reviewed four accounts payable warrants totaling $1,145,110.64 and 
one payroll warrants totaling one million seventeen thousand forty one dollars and sixty eight cents prepared to the town accountant and authorized the itemized expenditures for payment. Motion to accept. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you for the $718,717.96, one payroll warrants uh, totaling $213,011.66 prepared by the town accountant authorized the itemized expenditures for payment. Move to accept the report. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we have an announcement regarding household hazardous weight day. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm pleased to announce that uh, we are going to be holding a fall annual uh, fall household hazardous waste day um, with a, a separate company, uh, Sterile Cycle. Uh, Clean Harvest is not uh, is not doing uh, certain uh, communities or several communities, so we're going to be having it. And it'll be on Sunday, October the 22nd at the Recycling Center. And those that hours are normally 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yeah, uh, so, uh, when would be the next one after that? I know that there's some people that have, uh, I personally uh, probably will not be available that day. So is there any other dates that they could do put it there earlier or later? Or no, I'll tell you, we're lucky we got day. this we got them pinned down for this yeah. one. Okay. It's uh you know, it's a, a pretty popular uh, event for many towns and uh, we were just fortunate enough to get this company for that particular day. So okay. well, we'll have one in the spring. Okay. Do you have anything else out of the time? No, sir. Uh, is there anything on the air before we come? Mr. Chairman, I had uh, one issue I'd like to bring up. That is, uh, at 258 Oak Street, uh, up at the uh, corner of the corporate park, they've cleared a lot of land up there for some new building, which will be going before the planning board to accept. And uh, when the property was cleared, it uncovered a large number of dumpsters that were on another person's property that uh, people never knew that they were there because they were uh, hidden, not intentionally, but hidden because of the vegetation. So our uh, building inspector has sent the owner a letter saying that he is in violation and um, as a result of that letter, uh, the owner of the property will be going to the planning board to uh, sit down with them and to explain to the planning board and to the building inspector uh, what business he is using those dumpsters for. And uh, so uh, we will be getting an answer shortly. I uh, just want to let the people that have contacted me as the fact that I live on Oak Street uh, asked me what all those dumpsters were there for. So uh, the owner is going to be involved in explaining that whole thing. So, just a uh, public service announcement, I guess. Um, I just have one thing that, uh, that I'd like to say on uh, 
Last week we worked with the, the Pembroke Cameron Fisheries, we worked with the Division of Marine Fisheries at the DM off of uh, Cranberry Road. And uh, we put in a new fishway that yeah, was um, uh, edged and built by the people of the Division of Marine Fisheries. We helped them install that. And um, well, within uh, less than five minutes after we installed it, um, there was uh, several fish, moving on fish that jumped right in it. So it was kind of exciting to see that. Um, so they are on their way down uh, stream for juveniles. And uh, there's a few locations that we uh, probably going to have to try to work at to make it more suitable for them to go through that the uh, people from the Division of Marine Fisheries uh, picked out one of them was at the same site. So, so, uh, just to give you an update on that. I'm still working on trying to make it easier for the fish to come and go, so thank you. <clears throat> Are there any new business? I have no business, Mr. Chairman. I'll defer to Mr. Stone if he has something. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Boyle. <coughs> Quickly, uh, the Board of Selectmen has been in receipt of a letter um, Quickly, uh, it's from the planning board um, stating that uh, they have been made aware that the town of Pembroke can no longer be a member of two NPOs and that they must choose between the old colony and the Boston region groups. The planning board is in agreement with the board of selectmen's decision to be a member of the old colony MPO solely. However, they also have a question. The question is, is it worthwhile for the town to maintain its current affiliation with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, the primary planning and regional organization for the Boston area? This decision would depend on the cost of the affiliation and of membership with the MAPC. <coughs> To the extent of the planning board's knowledge, Pembroke currently does not derive much benefit from the MAPC because for regional <coughs> planning purposes, the town generally works with the old colony planning council. Therefore, it may be worth contemplating withdrawing entirely from the MAPC. However, there could be other relevant factors of which the planning board is not aware. So they would like um, us to get back to them uh, with uh, how this board feels of the content of this letter and to make a recommendation and uh, the planning board would like to hear from us. I don't know if we have responded yet to them yet on this issue but I think we need to do that. So that would be my recommendation that we contact the planning board about this letter and the content in it. Do I wanted to wait for the board to get this letter and let them know that there's been a couple of communities on the South Shore that have expressed an interest in. Uh, we're one of the few in, in the entire state that belong to two planning agencies. And there are some uh, neighboring communities that are in MAPC that want to join the old colony planning council. Um, right now, they are probably faced with having a special act of the legislature in order to get at it, MAPC. So, I wanted the board to be aware of that would be something that the, this board might. If you're interested in getting out of MAPC altogether, and I think that uh, basically the Old Colony Planning Council services this town uh, very well, um, that it would probably uh, require us contacting our state rep and filing an act of act of the legislature in order to get a, get out of MAPC. So, what what does the annual cost? I think it's around six grand a year. What are the benefits? Uh, we don't receive any benefits from NFBC. We're about as far south 
in the whole um, uh, network of communities that make up the metropolitan area planning council. So, uh, you know, like I said, we, we, we receive all the benefits from the old colony planning council. Why we were in two, you know, I don't know how it all started, but we've been in two for a long time. Right, so if, if, if the money was nominal, you know, less than a thousand dollars, and it'd be worthwhile for us to stay, because some of the benefits are, uh, to answer your question, we can we can mine the NAPC for, for information, for data, uh, and to supplement what we already get from the Old Colony Planning Council, uh, but it is, it's, du it's a duplicate, really. Uh, we, we can get some information from uh, the, the greater, greater Boston region, some mines from up there, uh, but for a price tag of $6,000 a year, uh, that's something that Old Colony Planning Council could help us with uh, reaching out to those folks on their own. Uh, so it's an added cost for the du duplicate service. Um, why don't we take that action? Uh, make a motion. Make the motion on second. Yeah, make a motion to reach out to our uh, our folks in the legislature, our Representative Josh Cutler and uh, Vinnie DiMasio, our state senator, uh, to I'm fully understand what the process is to withdraw from the NAPC. Second. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none. All those favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Chairman, under the new business, I want to, if I can, extend the congratulations of the board of selectmen to the municipality who was selected as the Plymouth County Coalition Executive Committee uh, this past week, and that's the emergency preparedness uh, group that is made up of uh, it's 26 or 28 towns and cities uh, in and around Plymouth County and uh, has a couple of towns in Norfolk County as well. But um, she's um, at, at the top of her class, basically, uh, as a um, as a member of the executive board. They make uh, funding decisions on um, just about everything that involves uh, Department of Public Health um, emergency management procedures. I, I know, Arthur. I agree with you. Something she did a wonderful job back at that snowstorm we had with the. Uh, you go? Nemo. Nemo. Uh, the trees down all over town. We had the emergency shelter open. Uh, so Lisa was a, a, a big part of uh, staffing that emergency shelter. So she has a practical experience under her belt, too, along with the knowledge and ability to go with it. Yeah, she was, um, it was announced that she was a candidate. She became unopposed because people think that much of her. <coughs> and, um, you know, being in that field as well, she's um, she's the best of the health agents on the South Shore, in my estimate. Yeah. That's her favorite, she does a great job. And while we're giving credit on the snowstorm, Sabrina can't take a backseat to anybody. She was up for days at a time. I don't know, I called her one time on a weekend when uh, uh, she was off duty. A uh, problem that we had that do with the deal with the Board of Health and uh, she was on a, uh, on a tour boat and uh, late in the afternoon, early evening or whatever, and uh, ended up taking care of it. Within about 10 or 15 minutes, I received a call out of the state of Europe. Yeah, we're lucky to have it. She's a few decades Mr. Chairman, Yeah, I think that would be in order. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, before um, we go to the next couple of issues, I would um, ask the board to uh, enter into an executive session for a five-minute period to come back out so that we can continue the discussion regarding this special town meeting with the town moderator and the town accountant. <coughs> but I really need to 
share something with the board before uh, before we continue with the meeting. Okay. So, um, I'm moving into executive session for uh, several minutes to uh, conduct strategy preparation and negotiation with non-union personnel to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel to discuss strategies for collective bargaining if an open meeting may have a definite effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declared <coughs> AFS, CMD, EPW, Union Grievance filed by a union member. Uh, Bill, you read that, but that is my motion. Thank you. Chairman Kim, the motion. Yes. Yeah. That's fine. Second. I do it for that. September 18th, uh, 2017, was a selectman's meeting, and we were in executive session, and we're now back in the regular session to uh, talk to the town accountant and uh, let's do come to town meeting uh, with some uh, grants received that offset some of these, uh, just to, to help ease the public's mind that we're not uh, going without looking for grants. Good. You know, both chiefs do a great job of asking for grants. Yeah, yeah, you can just have a little research in mind or they can, and it'll be helpful to get some of these through. Okay. In general, while we're talking about grants, uh, the third thing down where it might briefly uh, alluded to the, uh, the conversion of town and school accounting functions. It's going to be one software pack, one software system. And we're thinking about applying for whatever amount of money we need to go from the IT program of the community compact situation that the Lieutenant Governor yeah, was talking about. Talking about that, so. so we'll be working on that in like, We'll be getting a number. <laughs> Particularly seeing the DOR spell this up in the report three or four or five years ago. So the whole thing. They really want to have What is the second item about? Um, I'm not going to say I completely understand it, but it's something that we need to do as an assessment. It's something that um, all the time, not just the assessment, it's 
really has to do with map accuracy. In DPW planning, DPW with a lot of other students, um, planning and zoning conservation. What is the um, DPW water division? The work on our asset management system? They're asking to take um, 35000 out of water surplus and purchase the software program that would, uh, what would say, automate, manage um, how they send the work out to the eight guys who are in the division and how they can work out to the ground. Is there any kind of payback for the tower? Um, see, so right when you get everyone more productive. I think it also has something to do with the uh, keeping track of um, employees and stuff like that. Snow operations. Snow operations. Snow operations. Right. Snow operations. Uh, and I think it would help with inventory too for the U.S. hybrid stuff. Uh, Second, it's really a ratification and consolidation of the, uh, we call it the DMI now. Um, it's taking all of the three budgets and consolidating what's happening. It's just uh, really a really cool keeping um, As I said before, we have to, what we call reduce the tax rate, so apply free cash toward last year's snow deficit. That's really one of the two must use at this evening. That's four hundred and twenty two thousand. We are asking uh, the board in the town to begin to fund a workers' comp indemnity fund. We started that last year with the <coughs> uh, We put fifty thousand through that fund. We're asking because non public safety employees are covered under a separate statute for the town to establish and begin to fund a workers' comp fund for people not not covered in the one eleven F. We think if we do that three, four, five years we begin to pay off because we can start begin to self insure, which is what we did in fiscal eighteen. So we're saving money on that because we set aside money and we raise our deductibles to an extent self insure. Um, <coughs> Article five, we're asking for funding for four existing trust funds. Other post employment trust fund, which is um, retired health insurance. That obligation is up to unfunded liability is about four million dollars. We're asking for money for the uh, separation pay fund, which is simply buyback, buyback, buyback fund, and that's uh, equivalent to what we drew out two down last year. And we're asking for payment to the one of net piece of fire injury fund, and that's payment to the stabilization. Article 6 deals with the 17 and 18 um, funding of the police, I mean, sorry, not the police, firefighters contract. That's 173000 between two years, of which I think 117000 is applicable to fiscal 18. Article 7, I admittedly know nothing about it because I'm in the bottom of it, so it's a this is the special events <coughs> bylaw, Mr. Sean, that you wanted to roll forward, but then we had talked about. Right. So right now, I think the town council is getting a determination on whether the board has the statutory authority to ask for special events permit without having to go to a town meeting bylaw or craft a town meeting bylaw that may be more favorable than the one we saw at this point. So that's what this place on the here is. This is the one we rejected in the spring? We yes. rejected in the spring. The next three articles to the pond <coughs> treatment. Um, but, um, uh, do any of these have any room for um, there's two areas that are in this number of one at Really need some work to take vegetation out of there. Mm -hmm. And there's another one off the top of my street and the entrance into that dam. On the street going in, probably 50, 75 yards that 
could also use this all has to be permitted anyway, but not the DPD and the conservation So we invested in growth in the end that we've tried doing it by the end to, to take that stuff out. And it's just uh, they said probably the best way to do it is one of these excavated type of things that has like a 60, 60 foot arm on it that can reach in and grab that stuff and pull it out. Probably put it in a dumpster or something if you move it. Um, so I don't have any facts and figures on it, but I know that that's something that the fisheries is going to be looking at. And Vision Marine Fisheries has any money available to assist us in that. We definitely would use that. But if not, we'd be looking to the town. Something. I don't think it would be a huge cost, but it's something that really needs to be done for the future projects, or whether it happens on this or the future days, it's uh, should be something that's done with the other So we'd have to, as it stands now, we'd have to fund that today, because yep. this is the continuity of the treatment. Yep. Okay. <coughs> so we can put that in file. So it's not that. something we can add to this, we just have to have something to do. We'll do that for once. Um, Article 11 we talked about earlier. Article 12 um, is a, I don't know if you're doing this one, Steve, I'm not sure if my numbers are off here. Um, this is the Public Safety um, Building Committee to request to accept the report. Have Tom Eaton accept the report. Yeah, and I would just say that it's, you know, it's your warrant, so you can choose to put on whatever you think is appropriate and, and take off what you think isn't. And I don't think this is necessarily inappropriate. I just ask you to consider whether it's necessary. It seems a little bit unusual that that a town study committee will put an article before the meeting saying accept a report. Um, where the rubber hits the road is if there was funding attached or if there was an ask. Um, so I'm, I'm not suggesting that you necessarily take it off, but I just think, just ask that maybe you think it through closely to see whether um, it's really something that's necessary. It's probably going to engender a lot of discussion about a future future expenditures that actually won't be on the table. I mean, that, this is not a request for money; it's just a request to ask for a report. So ask for acceptance of a report, and if the meeting accepts the report. What does that mean? Does that mean that the article isn't going to go forward at a next town meeting for funding? Or I mean, it's really non-binding, I guess is what I'm saying. And the other thing that really um, I would be concerned about is that whatever report people are being asked to accept, make sure they have the ability to see it and read it beforehand. You can't, uh, I don't think it's quite appropriate to say to a town meeting member, attendee, you know, accept this report but they haven't had a chance to look at it yet. So I think they would need to be available to them in print ahead of time or a link and promoted so that people actually have a chance to look at it. I have no idea how thick it is, how long it is. Would you suggest that we go to uh, maybe the Springtown meeting with it and have a dollar figure attached to it for people to grasp? Well, you guys are missing the point here, if I can interject. So, we have a public safety building committee, uh, of which I'm a member of. So we have the police and fire department. Uh, we're funded through town meeting for these reports. So uh, the, the committee has asked the, this, this warrant article beyond to give them a forum uh, at, at town meeting, all town meeting, to present the finished reports. And for both police and fire stations, about 100 pages collated uh, each. Uh, the links to, to those. Uh, will be available. Uh, we would ask, uh, we have a meeting next week, so it hasn't been finalized, so I asked of you, Steve, being the moderator, uh, or the board of selectmen. So we want to finalize uh, what our approach is. And our approach, uh, tentatively, would be to have a, a quick presentation highlighting uh, what, is, what are in these reports, and as, as a way of bringing the public up to speed on what will be a significant ask for money uh, coming up very soon. So it's it's the intent is not to ask for any money. It's a, a 
it's a, a, a form for to put information out uh, in, in a proper form, we think. But if you if you let let the committee finalize next Tuesday, and then we'll ask you formally. Yeah, and I'll just say, and I appreciate that. And I'm looking at this for the first time, so I'm kind of thinking out loud. But I guess my suggestion is maybe to do that, you don't need necessarily an article. And I would certainly entertain uh, give you time to make a presentation, knowing that it's going to come up. And I think we did that the previous meeting, didn't we? Um, and I can't remember what the subject was. Community the community center or something or other. Um, and we've certainly done that, and I think it's appropriate to do that. I just mainly concerned with the wording of the article. Do you want to be here? I'll bring all excellent points. I'll, yeah, bring, and, I'll and, bring that up to the police, fire chief, and uh, the rest of the folks on the committee. Because you're right, we don't. We I don't want to. Uh, I don't. I don't want this town meeting to stub its toe on something that's really not an, an actionable item. I, mean, I can say right now, if you're requesting a reasonable amount of time to make a report on this issue, I would certainly allow it at the beginning of the meeting. It wouldn't necessarily be a public discussion, but if it would give you time to do that, and then it would probably indicate the need for the article. But again, it's your call about what is the, the article. The question I would have is, will we accomplish the same thing with public hearing? Uh -huh. We, we do intend to have having public cameras as well. Uh, see, this is the first, <clears throat> and you know, fair points and very well taken. And, uh, that an article may not be the proper form form for this, but we believe town meeting is. So if there, if we can have the same effect that we're looking for, without uh, disrupting town meeting or the flow of town meeting, that, that, that's really what we want. So. We'll look at this, and we next week, uh, next meeting prior to that we have, uh, we'll discuss it. When 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 did this, uh, this article warrant have to be signed? October second, you signed it. It was the tenth. Okay, we'll, we'll certainly know ahead of time. And uh, the meeting is October the second, sixth. The next uh, committee meeting. October second, isn't it? So, so we'll, we'll have to have a we'll have to have a discussion uh, prior to that and get back to this board of selectmen uh, if we're going to take this off quickly. I'll I'll have, I'll have that communication with those folks. I appreciate your input, and this is why we're meeting here today. Thank you. The next article asks is, is a request of um, wishes public works for two million dollar bond authorization. A 50% of the water revenue and 50% of the confidence. If you try to do a straight face, and I throw them in a straight face, we can't afford this for the insurance. Two and a half, so this will require a debt exclusion override. Debt exclusion override will require a special election that will require $12,000 at the cost of the reporting and that we won't have budget in right now. Um, I made the commission to public works and whatever this, whether they intend to proceed or they just ask for 10 minutes to present a report on much. The question I have is, I thought that the large projects that we're facing by this rules are all those issues. We, we looked at and a committee to present it to the town in the spring. That's what I thought the thing was. I was a little surprised to see this article. DPW doesn't write to it for all the time. We have a right to remove it. It's, it's not the right thing to do. It's, my only question is well, why are we going forward with this project when we have three others that are not on this water? I don't know. I guess we can then hopefully they just want to present a report. Just like the public safety bill. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could ask the DPW commissioners who are proposing this article to explain why they want this on the walk in the park. And then this board make the usual decisions that we have to make on these items. That would be the same thing that I 
Is that something you can do? Sure. Uh, the next <coughs> article is a request for two additional police officers. The article of that asks you a simple question, sure. This is the remainder of the fiscal year. What is that? Uh, that would be from the time the day, the day after town meeting from June 3rd. So essentially what the task is there is you fund eight months for two salaries. So that's two salaries daily? Yeah. Um, the next article asks for a week. My well, yes, for a minute. Yeah. Is it just, and maybe it's just a typo. Article 14 on the document that I have. Yeah, that's a typo. Submitted by the Recreation Commission. It's a typo. That's probably, I'm being up in up the Okay. So I'll just, I'll go by the number five. I'll come out. The one from the Recreation Commission asked for clarification earlier on how we classify things in the Recreation Commission. Yeah, that's fine. 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 Now, does this have something to do with the meeting we had with the DPW and recreation director? Right. It's going to do what? That's how it started. But then when they researched how to actually implement increasing their laborers' hours and salary, they were constrained by the title of SC4, being a part-time laborer. So just to even get started, they needed to remove the words part-time from SC4, so it can be either for part-time or for it. It's an hourly rate for the So again, I'll go by name as opposed to number. The next article asks for us to complete our obligation to the open space fund. The remainder that we owe is $5,000. The article after that asks, as far as I know, for three items that um, CPC is recommending for me, or two items that we said we've got and then the last article that I know of, um, it's gone. I have a my list actually. It's gone. It's gone. Great. So, that's a school committee issue. The school committee is taking that up to make that look clear. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I would like the board to entertain a um, situation, and I have the language upstairs uh, to open the warrant to include an article dealing with uh, part time employees. And this is going to be requested by the library director uh, amending the wage and classification plan to allow part-time employees right now the requirement is to wait two years for a step increase and the library director would like to have uh, that reduced to one year as it is for uh, full-time employees. So I'm requesting that the board open the door to include that article. Move the recommendation of the town administrator. Second. What would be the cost? I'll have that in the report. So the warrant is closed right now. It's closed. So I think we have to move to open it first and the recommendation. So you need that motion based on this. So we, open, we open the warrant, right? We open the warrant, one vote, take the vote on his recommendation, and then close the warrant again. We can do that if we want to move another vote. She's taking the business. She just needs to know that that's what's happening. And we open the warrant. Sorry. I have it. I'm really opposed. Your non warrant is open. I move and accept the town administrator's recommendation. Second. For what part time you are always at the public library? Second. All in favor? Aye. And we will close the warrant. Second. Committee, I don't want to have um, 
any other meeting logs, questions, if, if you can reach out to uh, all, all the people concerned sure. and tell them about the uh, discussion we had tonight and some of the concerns, uh, and there are ways to get their, uh, get their message across without an actual article, if they would consider that. Sure. Mr. Well, maybe I just add to the Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it kind of fits right in when he's going to pass the PW too. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other business? Um, I just have a question, oh. and if it's for the next meeting, just for information only, uh, that's fine. We have a September 9, 2005 letter from Mass Housing. That's for informational purposes. It's public record. It was from a public records request. Okay, it certainly seems to be good news for the town's perspective. It is, and uh, it has been recommended that the board select and consider drafting a letter of um, outrage to Mass Housing because in 2005, they saw an application for site plan eligibility at the Water Street location that's up right now, and they denied the application. Right, what made it better in <coughs> Nothing did, because the email, if you turn over that page, back page, right. there's a string of emails that say it is the exact same project on the exact same parcel, and equally unacceptable. So the residents of Water Street have asked uh, that the selectmen consider sending Mass Housing a letter that they are unhappy that they've never heard of this project. I would move the uh, recommendation of the assistant town administrator. Would <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> you like to see the draft for next week? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great, great news. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Good. I think it's great news. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the town account has left the home, but I think after going through all his numbers and his explanation and planning on how to best spend our account for the $1.9 million free cash amount, it is excellently done. And I personally would have not an accountant, but as a selectman, looking at his report, I certainly agree with how he has distributed those funds. Yeah, I would agree. I think he put the right amount in our savings account and wrote that and so forth. Very good. We've got a stack somewhere. Yeah. I mean, these are big expenditures, but if you don't start small, you're never going to get any bigger. Problems is not going to go away. But there were a lot of other categories as well. And uh, I personally would have no fault with uh, any of his decisions. So I think he's did a great job. Yeah, speaking of OPEP, <coughs> the retirees' health care discussion, uh, when will we revisit that? I got to have it for you for next week. I'd just like to make a comment on that. Back in time, I attended a meeting of the insurance committee where this issue was discussed. And as reported in our agenda here tonight, uh, this board did take a vote to go along with those increases. And they were thoroughly discussed at that meeting, but now we hear the other side of it. So maybe we didn't have that opportunity originally. And I think it's uh, a good idea to, re to revisit that. And we'll, we'll have a discussion. Thank you. Any other business? Uh, motion to run. Second. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for attending the September 18th Board of Selectmen meeting. And I'm uh, looking forward to uh, uh, the 
this fall coming, and uh, have a good uh, rest of the week. Thank you.